is one of the biggest players on tour. No doubt about that. The 32-year-old, six foot five, she serves straight away. So Melissa's going to jump in and set hand setting, staying high over the hands. It's a great read. Bump on two is a little bit sly, but a chance for Melissa gripping angle. Canada led by Scott Davenport, former AVP player. An all-round great guy. He has a great team here. The rain starting to come down again in Hamburg. <laughs> Melissa to serve, whose father was a coach of Mark Hees and John Chills back a long time ago. It's two from two for Melissa. Not only is her father a coach, her brother also playing a few events with Christian Redman on the world tour. Redman was here coaching Ben Saxton and Grant O'Gorman, who upset their group to top their pool this week, but unfortunately lost out in the last 32. Melissa really hitting Orsi Toth really hard to the outside arm. Paven enjoying it. This is the start that Canada wanted. Italy potentially feeling the heat here in Hamburg. Time out already. And it's one-way traffic. Melissa has come out, scored two points really early. playing with Greta Kikolari. We took a fifth in this competition in 2013, but the rain is absolutely hammering down here. The weather's been great for the last week or so. The ponchos are out. No wind which you don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's good for the players, but maybe not good to shift these clouds. We're back to the game. Orsi to throw on the right side, having a little look, but Pavin's there. Chipping around is going to be difficult today, and they miss again. Scared of the block of Pavin, and the previous time these two met was in Las Vegas at the four-star events back in October, and it was a 2-0 win for Canada. Finally, Italy on the scoreboard. Great service run from Melissa. Who took a ninth with Taylor Pishka back in 2015. Having been served again, just rolls super high. Previously playing in Italy, the toughest league of indoor volleyball, also in Brazil, Paven. And then the short knuckle with a little bit of backspin on it. Pick that one up, Italy. What a start for Canada. In a draw that's wide open. Because so many of the top teams are already out. It's a golden chance for Italy to cause another upset. In what so far is the lowest scoring world championship in history. It's a better speed from Orsitov, just a wrist up. And it's a quicker swing. Everything so far has tried to be a shot as we have a look at how wet. It really is out there. Oh, 
Pavan from the inside back to the line. 6 5. A player who can really move well. And for somebody who played lots of opposite work, right side play indoors, where she didn't really have to pass or set. Her ball control is quite something. Faven just lays it out so Melissa can play it out. Good stability in the setting of Sarah Pavin. Serving again from Melissa is really, really strong. The block's there as well, but the cover from Menegardi finds an angle. Good play, slightly wider, squeezes it past the outside hand. And that's good because Pavin is tall. They move her around a little bit. Some avenues will open up to just squeeze the ball through. This is slow though for Italy. But Canada are the favourites for this one. How good was that from Pavin? Because being 6'5, playing that short ball is not something that's comfortable. Italy fighting back here. Some angle from not really a position of balance or height doesn't really matter. Pavin, who just guides it to the sideline. In the other game, Australia up against Russia by two. Canada up by Already six points at the second change. But on the outside court, 18-16, Clancy and Artaccio against Russia. Magrock is over. And Colomina, who beats Agatha Duda yesterday in one of the surprises of the whole competition. But Melissa just firing through that one, hitting the seam. She's hit both ways, pad and screaming. I'm stopping playing indoor to pursue the Olympic dream. And that was very much something that became a reality. High setting across, and it is good setting because Pavan is left-handed. Just sitting that ball across her from Melissa is a key, key bit of work from her. Good width, and it's a great start. It's a fifth place for Heather Bansley and Sarah Pavin in Rio 2016 before they went their separate ways. The other Canadian team in this women's draw. Going out in the round of 32 to the Australians in a matchup that was probably more fitting for the latter stages of this tournament. Pavin. 6-5, if she hits deep, you're going to struggle to stop her. 13-5. Italy cannot buy points here. Finally, they get one through.
jumping back to the line, Pavin. She made the read. She couldn't make the block, though. Service pressure this time to the inside of Pavin. Crosses the call, she stays high. And that's what you get with Sarah Pavin because of her height. She can just go over the block all day long. 6-1, the Italian blocker. It's good from Canada. Both players going for the ball. Talking to Scott Davenport after their game yesterday. He was saying that they weren't adjusting their serve reception positioning quick enough. It looks like they're on top of it today. Melissa from the right side. Jousting around at the net. Second opportunity again. Pushing across Pavin. The stability that Melissa is giving Pavin here is really key. Setting tight to the net as well. And what does that allow? It allows Pavin to go over the top. Just having a listen in to Melissa. Rimona Paradez, who's Dynamic, smooth, making good decisions. Hitting to the perimeter of court, and it's been a great start for Canada, but Melissa has really taken control of this one at times. Trading up the pass. What a read. She's played that one before, Orsi Tooth, but you might beat Melissa once with that sharp off speed angle, but this time she just steps around late. It helps when you've got Pavin taking so much of the line. Accuracy again. but a miss serve to follow it up. Italy, just seven points in this opening set. Let's not beat around the bush though. Having seen games this week, there's still a long way left in this game. It seems to be pressure is a big component for both teams. Some teams starting slow, some teams winning the first set and then potentially seeing the finish line and starting to falter. And that's what Canada have to try and stop. They have to use this experience that they've gained in these 26 tournaments together, where they've won three gold medals, two silvers, and one bronze. That's a great return, really, for this team. For Pavin, who used to play with Bansley, now one of the biggest rivals, but Pavin just manages to skip out drive through, show a little bit of cross-court. And that's why the high line doesn't have to be super accurate. Because she showed the defender the angle. On two, Menegardi, there's a bit of miscommunication. Reactions from Menegardi, the knuckle goes on the diagonal, but Pavin on two. Get her on the net and let her feast. Manigardi's reactions, super good. Pavin, just physical. The target, width, 
and it's a great play. That's exactly what they're trying to work on. Running that ball wide to the pin, and then going off the outside. <laughs> Serve goes out the back. And so far, so good for Canada. But there's still a long way to go in this quarterfinal. This crowd in Hamburg have been, they've made this Rottenbar Marina an iconic location for beach volleyball now, alongside Vienna, Clark and Furt. The angles from Pavin. It's a ripper. The footwork to kick out and drive in is one thing. The wrist away to cut that ball back, another. Always communicating, Melissa, with the width again from the pin, Pavin. Italy have managed to get one back. It's always going to be difficult for the Italian chippers. With Sarah Pavin on court today. But there's a little bit of sunshine on a rainy day. Melissa from the left side. There's an angle. Both Canadians very good at getting out, driving through, facing cross court. And just turn back on a sharp angle. Been impressive so far, Melissa. Back set from Italy. Moving the blocker around again, trying to find avenues and alleyways to attack through. <laughs> Set point number two, Melissa hammers the line, but Outrageous from Italy, but Melissa just stays so relaxed in that bit of defense, but so aggressive in the way she goes to town on that ball. Two different skills from Melissa. The first one, calm. That's some rip from Orsitov, but all the weight out of the ball, relaxed in the shoulders, a long touch as well, and Melissa hammers through the center of the court to give the opening set to the favorites for this one, the number nine seeds of Sarah Pavin, Melissa Humana Paradez. Well, there are the stats. Service errors three. That's incredible. It's not like Italy scored so many points, and three of those were service errors. 18 kills, no blocks of having, that's a surprise, and only one unforced error throughout the game. Side out percentage, pretty good from Canada. Well, the service placement tells us a lot, doesn't it? Well, it tells us everything on this occasion. The experienced Menegati not getting many balls in the service reception stage of the game. Also to have struggled siding out, but she wouldn't be the first against this Canadian team. The RTBS showing us the way again. Almost 200 calories for Also to and she has been served every ball. They've frozen Menegardi out of the game. The crowd freezing a little bit as well. Yeah. 
Straight down the line, Pavin. It's a great start. C is the reaction from the blocker. It's the last chance saloon for Italy. And they're going to throw everything they've got at it. Of course they are. Great angles from Pavin again. Just opens up, hammers through in a draw that we have to just keep an eye on all the time. Who's your favorite to win this competition? Australia took the opening set on the outside court against Russia, 24-22. Clancy Atache, who won in Warsaw just two weeks ago. Now, one of the favorites for this competition. Underneath Kirk Pittman there, expansive and expressive way of playing. And this is just a battle. It really is for Italy. They need to just stay in there, dig deep. They're gonna have problematic times, but digs like those from Orsitov. And the old SWAT falling backwards with a whip of the arm. That'll do for Italy. Italy's indoor team doing incredible stuff at the moment. Second in the World Championships with the most competitive league in the world that Sarah Pavin used to play in before stopping her indoor career to play beach. She was one of a few people that played indoor and beach at the same time. She'd play indoor in the winters and beach in the summer, but as the calendar of beach volleyball turned into a year-round thing, and the Olympics were at stake, Pavin had to make some serious decisions. Bees the call is going to the pin, you can see it. The call of setting the ball wide, and it just gives a more acute angle. The Pavin with the long levers, just to chop it back into. It's a cut shot, but it's a very quick one from up there. Italy passing well here, trying to go over the block. Melissa asking Sarah Pavin to turn on two different games, different concept here for Italy. Passing better, and they're trying to overload Pavin at times just by going off the hands. But also using that two ball to catch her out. Straight down the middle with long. Just cannot take it away from Menegati and Orsi Tuff. They've had such a great run in this competition. It could still go all the way to the semis. Ace from Melissa again. How many have we seen from her today already? This one moving, dipping all the time. Too quick off the arms, finds the net before the bump sets. Of Menegati. Pavin! The big paws of Pavin penetrating. Boom! Lights out! on Italy from Canada.
Well, time out because that's a three-run streak for Italy, who started so well. Italy, you have to give credit to. Coming out of Pool A, they took the number one seed going through the competition because of their result against Sandra Itlinger and Chantal Laboria. The home team seeded first in this competition. And all that meant was that they've had a slightly easier draw at times until now, but no, Kelly Kleiss and Sarah Sponsor have done well this year. They had Italy. So Italy had Argentina in the round of 32. A lucky loser because of that number one seed. Aces from Melissa. When she's not serving aces, she's serving Italy out of system, putting them under pressure. And what does that mean? Pavin can make blocks. So it's a no-win scenario here. Serving straight down the line. Another one. Melissa serving Canada into the semi-finals here. It's a lonely place out there for Italy when the first pass isn't going in. Driving back through. It's another error. There's a change of sides for Ozitov as well. Doesn't matter. They just keep using. Ozitov, the pressure is well and truly on her now. It really is. The challenge from Italy, maybe they're just running out of ideas from the first angle, it looked well and truly out with no touch, but they want to know if there was a touch off the hands. Oh, it's so close. The only one who really knows at the moment is Sarah Pavin and Hawkeye. No touch, we carry on. Staying on the left side, Orsi Turf back on an angle. Very good footwork. Finally, a side out for Italy. It's been a difficult few moments, but they've made one. Australia leading again on the outside court against Russia. It looks like Canada and Australia will be going through, looking at the draw at this moment in time. Hi from Pavin, doing what she does best. Simple from Sarah Pavin, staying high, going over the hands, using the height advantage. Back to the right side, Orsi Turth, who's Missing side outs from that side. Actually looked really comfortable on the left when she went over that side. The next game in the Red Bull Beach Arena, Brazil. And Brazil's only team left on the female side of the draw. Remember, 12 World Championships this now, or the 12 World Championships. Menengali on two. Brazil have never not been on the podium on the women's side of the draw, ever. Fernanda and Barbara are Brazil's last hope in this competition. It's a huge game. The 12th seeds of Barbara and Fernanda. Probably the team from Brazil that were given hope, but behind the likes of Rebecca and Anna Patricia in form and also Agatha Duda, but what do we know about this competition this week? Nothing, as Melissa chips back line. We might just know that Canada have got one foot at the moment in the semis. Bavin again, no answer for Italy here. And it's runaway work. Pavin has almost sided out every ball and made so many blocks. We knew that the height advantage 
would be an issue for Italy here, being a smaller team, chipping around, but Pavin and Melissa have just taken this by storm. On to all day. It's an exhibition of beach volleyball from Canada. The confidence will be building. Big game still left to play, but Melissa and Sarah Pavin, led by Scott Davenport, look like they're through. And just remember, it's 3-3 in this game as well. 3-3. The side up not really going to plan for if there's too many errors. Melissa still going for every ball. Ace from Italy, though, it keeps them alive. Timeout comes our way. And how impressive have the Canadians been? Sarah Pavin, who also played for Kentucky, comes from a volleyballing family, both of the Canadians do. Her parents run a club called the Waterloo Predators. Well, there's only two Predators on the court at the moment, and the side-out percentage and the kill ratio backs that one up. So for anyone from the Waterloo Predators watching today, Sarah Pavin is doing a great job out there. Leaking the pass to the left-hand side. Pavin whips back to the line. Menegardi with a chance to get this one closer after the technical timeout. But no. Chipping around doesn't really work against Canada at times because of Pavin's height. But Melissa's speed. Bosh into the sand. Another one from Pavin. Scoring points for fun here with Melissa. And they go the whole way. This Canadian team. You would expect them, looking at the draw, to be the favourites against Brazil or Switzerland in the semi. But then Russia, Australia, America, and the other side of the draw. That will be a tough test for any team in the world. Melissa just holding the platform for days and ripping the line. Through. The block goes Manigardi. In a time where, really, it's too little, too late for Italy, but they're playing now for a little bit of pride. Looks as if on the outside, courts. Australia still in control against Russia. Pavin still in control against Italy. The arm swing, really smooth and quick. Back to the line, Melissa's just waiting. It's been such a dominant display, breaking angle. Great decision, breaking 
on the softer shot of Manigati. So quick though, Pavin, for somebody so, so tall. It's really impressive. The athleticism and the speed of the movement. Someone else who's pretty athletic, Melissa. This time off the hands. That's a tactic that's worked throughout for Italy, but the pass and set hasn't been where it needs to be to keep running that ball slightly wider on Pavin. Can't win every battle, Sarah Pavin. I know you want to, but not this time. You've won your fair share here this morning. It's coming over this time. Again, breaking, reading the game. Pavin from the left side, chops it back. And it's so high and quick. And it's also well disguised from Pavin because she looks to the line and really whips it back on a cross-court angle. Sucks Meningardi to the line before beating her back to the sideline. Again, they run with speed and they beat them back across the face. Confirmation has come in that Australia are the first team into the semi-final beating Russia 2-0. Big result for Tacho Clancy, Kirk Pittman, Brad Tutton and the rest of the Australian team here. Manigati keeps the hopes and dreams of Italy alive, but you would think it's too little, too late for them. Well, another error from Italy brings up the first match point in this quarterfinal. It's been a dominant performance, to say the least. Canada sending a message here. Melissa, been so impressive in defense, but the transitional work every single time creates pressure on the opposition. And there you have it. It's Canada that go through to the semi-finals here in Hamburg. And a terrific performance for Melissa Humana Paredes and Sarah Pavin. They're going through to the final four. They're still here on the second weekend in a competition that's lost so many of the favorites. Can Canada go the whole way?